Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with PepLink. Today's host is Jason. He'll be presenting today, and he is PepLink's technical marketing engineer. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit them in the question box, and Jason will end of today's presentation. Jason, I am finished for now. You can go ahead and take it on over. All right, thanks, Julie, and uh, thanks, everybody, for letting me come and speak to you today about the PepLink Advantage. Today, we're going to focus on enterprise branch networking solutions and opportunities. Here's uh, just a quick table of contents of what we're going over, introduction, kind of what we mean by the PepLink Advantage. Then we'll go into our SD-WAN and overall description, how Speed Fusion fits that, and then we'll start to take a closer look at some of those branch networking opportunities and wrap up with questions. First off, a little bit about ourselves. PepLink was founded in 2006, currently holding over 30 granted patents regarding Speed Fusion RSD-WAN solution. We are a comprehensive wired and wireless SD-WAN focused for any deployment that you can come up with. PepLink is a strong global brand. We have over 500 partners and resellers scattered over 70 countries currently, and we are really driven by passionate industry evangelists uh, that preach the advantages of what PepLink can do. PepLink is an effective agile team currently clocking in at 127 people, of which 81 are dedicated R&D engineers. We have a very rapid open feedback loop, and what I mean by that is, is we're a fairly flat organ, uh, org structure, uh, and that uh, comments and questions can usually get to the right people fairly quickly, meaning we do have those lean, efficient workflows to not really get bogged down in minutia or uh, figuring out who on the org structure something has to go to. We do have that, again, direct communication to the team from our form, form.peplink.com, and you can touch base with a whole mix of people from the PepLink team directly, engineers, support, um, marketing, if you will, and then uh, as well as our reseller team, our partner teams, and end users. So if you do have a question that you believe you're not getting answered in the proper amount of time, throw it up on the form as well. We'll get to you. Uh, we'll get you what you need one way or the other. Recent accomplishment that PepLink is very proud of is being recognized on the Magic Quadrant uh, that Gartner puts out roughly every quarter. They shine a light on the brightest and most capable companies. And we now have a spot on that prestigious report, and it has certainly raised the profile of PepLink accordingly. Well, why are we on the report? Again, we uh, focus on, uh, quite a bit of our energies on an SD-WAN solution. Strictly speaking, the way that business works, it's changing. Work's done abroad, not necessarily in the office, and having a consistent internet connection is key to how you stay online and get business taken care of. Corporate networks have to change with the times as well, and we've seen an uptick as such in software-defined wide area networks or SD-WANs are the answer. Well, they bring unparalleled agility and cost savings to your business. SD-WAN architecture connects to your branches and data centers, optimizes the network performance you're using, and we do this for about a third of the cost of traditional WANs. Well, let's take a look side by side and see why an SD-WAN solution should be attractive to you. With a traditional WAN, these can get fairly expensive, as you start to negotiate contracts for uptime, et cetera, not normally very scalable. You're buying at a particular tier or level of access, which means you have a fairly inflexible network. Everything is flattened out and a single point of failure. And you do usually have to come in and configure the router individually. I mean, you know, there's not really a cloud-based solution to go and uh, touch base with the cable modem, for example. Contrast that with an SD-WAN. 
we bring you that extreme reliability at about a third of the cost because what we're doing is bonding multiple connections together to give you the uptime you need. And because you are using multiple connections, you can usually find better deals out there than some of those more expensive contracted solutions. This allows you uh, to freely add or remove links as the needs change within the network. And most SD-WANs, including ours, has a central management option to keep eyes from the cloud. Wireless SD-WAN is going to be about 15 to 20 percent of the global SD-WAN infrastructure market by 2021. This is according to the IDC. Uh, Peplink's market share in that wireless SD market has increased to 21 percent in 20, uh, 2016, meaning there are a number of opportunities available for people as they need them. Well, what is an SD-WAN? An SD-WAN router allows you to simplify and consolidate your network by replacing a number of other pieces of equipment that you have and scaling down and uh, streamlining your service. An SD-WAN router can be a load balancer. It is a VPN appliance or termination point. It's an optimizer. It's a firewall. And it does all your standard routing as well. An SD-WAN is cloud optimized with uh, virtual solutions that you can deploy in data centers around the world. This gives you the ability to route around network fails and give you that uptime again that is necessary for the day to day. An SD-WAN is secure. According to Gartner's definition, you know they got to provide secure VPNs, have the ability to integrate those additional services and offload everything to the edge router. Well, with uh, what this means is basically having a local breakout for your internet bound traffic, have routing capabilities to go either to the branch or the cloud location, and to be able to customize things as necessary. We got to do this easily. Being able to fail over between WAN connections and using the best mix of public and private circuits that you may have available to you. The ability to scale without integrating another bottleneck into the mix and to be able to optimize traffic between sites. And it's gotta be intelligent and hands off as well. Your SD-WAN router should be able to actively monitor that way in quality, make intelligent decisions to direct flow to be able to set up uh, traffic steering rules and be able to just, once you have that set up, to set it and forget it, to be able to let it do what it does best. Well, why is Peplink adopting this terminology? Our SD-WAN solution, Speed Fusion, matches well with that definition put out by Gartner, and we've been doing this before it was really being tracked over a decade. SD-WAN is that kind of first standard industry-wide term that encapsulates what we do very efficiently. And if you use this term, it can simplify communications with your partners. Uh, it allows you to avoid confusion with the more uh, traditional physical server load balancing products. Now, we're not... Uh, replacing our existing peplink terms with SD-WAN, but it's kind of a good shorthand to describe what we do with other people. Now, how does this apply to us? Well, we certainly are a leader in WAN virtualization with our cloud-based management tool uh, in Control 2. Our virtual peplink uh, speed fusion termination points with Fusion Hub and the, the ability to set up rules to govern traffic going from point A to point B just within the UI easily. We have a vast array of mobile-based products that give you a wide mix of connection WAN opportunities between cellular, between Wi-Fi, between VSAT, and of course, your traditional Ethernet-based connections. I've touched on with the next two here, our in-control two is our SD-WAN controller, and Fusion Hub is kind of the uh, is the ability to virtualize one of those endpoints accordingly. In Control 2 really is kind of the magic behind the sauce. It's an SD WAN enabler. You can see more of it, of course, at incontrol2.peplink.com. But in a nutshell, 
In Control 2 is our cloud-based management monitoring and configuration solution. It brings a whole host of zero-touch configuration options to the table. You have the ability to deploy SD-WAN solutions from the cloud. A comprehensive reporting package allows you to keep eyes on the network. And this is included with your device warranty. It's a value add that you certainly shouldn't have to ignore. Well, let's talk about more specifically Speed Fusion itself. Uptime is the name of the game in today's marketplace. And if you lose a traditional connection, you're dead in the water. Even if you have multiple internet connections going into a traditional non SD WAN router, if one goes down, a lost connection is going to drop a session. Uh, load balancing really isn't the way to go about it. This is where SD-WAN comes into play, allowing you to combine, bond, or aggregate multiple WAN connections into a single VPN tunnel. So if you do lose one of those internet connections, you remain up and running with sub-second failover between the internet connections. Speed Fusion is our patented technology allowing you to create a single VPN across all available internet connections you have passed to it. This gives you the bandwidth from all of those WANs bonded at the packet level, <clears throat> excuse me, and encrypted with 256-bit AES military-grade encryption. This gives you aggregation for even a single user or session as well as that persistence. If you lose a WAN, you don't have to restart the session. With the Speed Fusion SD WAN, you're again combining multiple commodity links, saving you up to 90% of those normal network costs of a more expensive solution. And uh, this is going to add up over time. In, in essence, effectively, you're giving your customer cash back by migrating to a Speed Fusion solution. Speed Fusion, to kind of get into the nuts and bolts a little bit, it does require a minimum of two Speed Fusion capable peplink devices. Now, different models uh, can create Speed Fusion at various levels. And what I mean by that is there's a few different ways that Speed Fusion can be deployed, which we'll get into in a moment. We do need to have a public IP on at least one of those WAN connections being used. Now, if it's not a static, it's okay. Just register at one of, one of our supported uh, dynamic DNS services, and we can build the connection to the host name instead of the IP address. <clears throat> Again, we have multiple configuration types available, uh, both in a point-to-point -point as well as a mesh deployment. Uh, that mesh can be a partial or a full mesh between all available endpoints. And we do have multiple deployment methods. You can either go into the UI direct to, to set things up, or we do have those zero touch configuration options from the cloud within control two. Here's how it works. Your sessions are encrypted, broken up into packets, and then they're sent across all available WAN connections. Packets get then decrypted, reassembled into sessions at the remote office, and the transmission and reception are done at the speed of all the WAN links combined. Minus the overhead, of course, for your VPN. There's a small amount you take off the top. I mentioned there's a few levels of uh, Speed Fusion to deploy at. Where everything begins is our PEP VPN, which is basically an IPsec analog, but a whole heck of a lot easier to get up and running. Next up is hot failover, or what we call session persistence. That ability to have a session not drop on a WAN failure. WAN smoothing is kind of more consistency-based rather than aggregation-based. This uh, gives you the ability to create a single jitter-free data stream for real-time applications. And then finally, uh, bandwidth bonding. This is, uh, you know, the everything lumped up together. You combine the speed, the bandwidth for multiple WAN connections to give you the horsepower you need. Hot failover, again, is the ability to stay up and running, that 100% uptime that businesses are looking for. Small office, branch office connectivity, doing this as a long-distance Ethernet connection to bridge across. 
uh, retail connectivity, connecting your POS devices back to the ERP. Uh, hot failover again is what we're really looking for, that reliability, that uptime of your day-to-day. -day. When smoothing again is more consistency, this is real-time application-based VoIP calls like we're using now, video conferencing, TV and radio broadcasts, where jitter will be the death of the session. We need that consistency more than uh, raw horsepower. Bandwidth bonding is that raw horsepower. Aggregating the connections together using this as an MPLS alternative. Remote surveillance or in-vehicle connectivity, those where you have this necessary high import real-time data coming down that you do need to get from A to B as quickly as possible. So again, to think about it, Hot failover is unbreakable sessions when smoothing is reliability, and bandwidth bonding is that raw speed. Here you'll see again a summary of kind of the uh, applications generally using speed fusion at these levels, and a few of the customers that we have uh, certainly seen people take advantage of things. I'm not going to go into a lot of them. I'll cherry pick one or two, but if you want to see the rest, Head over to the website, just peplink.com, and you'll see case studies for these applications. One I do want to touch on specifically, however, is the town of Tonawanda, New York. They went and migrated away from just this, uh, a 50 meg MPLS Fios, uh, and they had some wireless backhaul going on between connections, but we've gone ahead and replaced that with Speed Fusion connecting the nine sites back to headquarters. And the numbers that have come out of this just still continually surprise me. Their monthly cost before our solution was $96,000, which we were able to drop down to seven grand, saving them 96% on their bottom line with an ROI of just 4.6 months and getting them roughly 15 times the bandwidth that they had before. Clinton National Bank is another one who migrated away uh, from a standard MPLS going into Speed Fusion, connecting uh, their branch offices back to headquarters with a mixture of 580s and 210s. Uh, we saved them about 85% on their bottom line and that extra bandwidth that they were able to uh, take advantage of by spinning up a disaster recovery site as well. This is, again, kind of mixing those commodity connections, giving you the uptime and the savings to make it a very attractive solution. All right, let's touch base now with kind of the branch networking applications. Again, business is decentralized. Branch offices, telecommuting employees all require access to headquarters for the day-to-day, -day, necessary resources that may be uh, at any given moment, uh, video calls, VoIP calls, etc. Peplink's line of products makes that connectivity easy with Speed Fusion, along with our multi-WAN router line, which are the Peplink balances, as well as the Fusion Hub, which is that virtual Speed Fusion termination point. Hot failover keeps you up and running by routing around those connections as we touched on, using control two to further define hot failover to respond dynamically to those outages as they occur. Uh, go ahead and add, you'll be able to add that additional bandwidth and scale accordingly, makes Speed Fusion a very attractive solution. And we have those easy configuration options, whether going through the UI or through in control two to get this up and running quickly. Remote connectivity, whether on a client level of, or a just an always on connection, easily done here. So using on the client based side, we do support L2TP with IPsec to, to connect it back to headquarters. Now, you know, L2TP is, kind of, uh, is pretty much the de facto standard nowadays, but for legacy devices, we do have PPTP functionality as well that you can be able to use. 
Uh, Speed Fusion, again, is that always-on military-grade encrypted connection back to headquarters for that always, always there connectivity to resources that you need. Harrington Industrial Plastics takes advantage of this with 43 branch 380s and then a pair of uh, 1350s and high availability back at headquarters. We replace the more expensive MPLS links with our Speed Fusion solution, saving them about 100 grand annually and increasing their bandwidth by, uh, by a factor of four. And we got this 43 branch solution designed and, de uh, and deployed in less than a year, emphasizing again how easy it is to get things up and running once the equipment's in place. Enterprise branch networking, retail chain connectivity. And what we mean here is uh, your mom and pop stores uh, is probably the most common use. Uh, giving you that LTE failover with our BR1 uh, line of equipment. So if your cable modem that you have plugged into there, because again, they're multi-WAN, the 4G connection automatically takes over, giving you that reliable throughput for everything you got on the network, your, your TIL, your VoIP call, security cameras, et cetera. For larger stores, you know, this is where Speed Fusion comes into play again. Combine those multiple internet connections and get that increased horsepower back to headquarters. High def cameras, digital signage, <clears throat> like our new PEP sign offering, VoIP, as well as a whole bunch more. Some of the more common pieces of equipment kind of depend on the size of the network. For those remote or branch site lo uh, locations, we do have our BR1 line, of which we now have offerings of LTEA. Uh, if we're looking to go ahead and actually build the Speed Fusion Tunnel, our Balance 1 or our Balance 210 makes a very attractive offering uh, at that level. So for headquarters, then we'd start to take a look at kind of the big boys, our Balance 1350 or the 2500. And then we do again have those virtual instances, Fusion Hub, that you could terminate that connection against as well. Brand new product that I'm proud to talk about finally is the Peplink Balance 30 Pro. This is a mixture of two Ethernet connections, an LTEA cell module, as well as a PoE output for port land side. And we have a 2x2 MIMO 11AC AP built into this sucker. We got a lot of horsepower under the hood as well, 400 megs of throughput, it supports hot failover out of the box. We do have this as a uh, where you can apply quality of service. We do have a basic content filter in place as well as a staple pack inspection firewall, all within the Peplink UI. And then of course, keeping an eye on things within Control 2, uh, the PDX. This is another one of those that's meant to be deployed out in the field. It's a Pelican case enclosure. 400 mega throughput under the hood. We've got out of the box four LTEA modems, a USB, as well as two uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. This does have uh, support Speed Fusion at all levels, as well as comprehensive and control two management. Now, one of the cool add ons that you can do with the PDX is on the side you're going to see three bays that you can actually install one of our new speed fusion engines bringing the uh, total number of connections up to 10 LTEA or LTEA rather connections available to you. So you use the PDX to connect temporary sites such as a one-time event disaster recovery or we need to set up a mobile HQ someplace. You can use the PoE outputs in there to power uh, additional APs that you may need out of the box right away. Uh, again, with the temporary location concept, you know, if you need to go to a remote location and set up a video stream, this is a self-contained rugged unit. Plug and play is the name of the game. Next product I'm very happy to start talking about is the MBX. What's very cool about these is uh, we're starting to take a somewhat modular approach with the gear. 
In this case, the cell module on the top can be swapped out for future proofing. For example, we do have 5G support coming very soon. This is a powerful piece of equipment. Up to 500 concurrent users with a giga throughput going through things and a wide variety of deployment options available to you. It does have a built-in terminal block as well as that ruggedized metal enclosure means you can take this out in the field. Full and control to support with GPS fleet management as well as your overall network monitoring and management options. The MBX out of the box comes with four CAT12 LTE Advanced Pro uh, cable modems, uh, excuse me, cellular modems built in, three gig WAN ports, two USB WAN connections in the same size and relative form factor is our current HD4. Uh, the MBX also is our latest product to support ignition sensing. Ignition sensing comes into play when you deploy this into a vehicle and wire it direct into the electrical system. Uh, when you flip the key, it will automatically turn on or off your PepLink device, uh, saving you wear and tear on the car battery. Ignition sensing, as I said, is new, uh, the MBX is the latest product to support, but we do also have this in our uh, the BR. Uh, actually, I have to update that it's BR Transit, the baseline HD4, and now the MBX. People taking advantage of our branch networking solution, and I mean, you have to talk about Hickory Farms. You know those seasonal kiosks that you see in the mall as you get, you know, as you get towards the Christmas season. All of these are using our BR1 devices, over 560 locations generally at any given moment. In Control 2 is kind of, a, again, that magic sauce working in the background, allowing you to clone configurations so you're not manually setting up uh, each one uh, individually. This also, of course, again, within Control 2's uh, comprehensive monitoring and management uh, capabilities it brings makes it easy to keep eyes on the network. All in all, this made it very easy to go ahead and get these kiosks set up. You really didn't need to have an on-site IT guide to go ahead and go through the paces. VLAN segmentation allowed you to uh, Secure each location where they didn't net, where they didn't need on site to see what kiosk A, B, or C was doing. Everybody stayed in their own lane. I've touched on PepZim a bit, but it does worth digging into. PepZim is our brand new Internet of Things product line we have brought to the market. Where things begin is with the PepLink switch, which is, I suppose you could say, an honorary PepZim product. With the switch in place, this allows you to remotely monitor power consumption as well as turning on or off PoE ports for all connected devices. And when you uh, pair this with InControl 2, this does give you network-wide VLAN configuration options to be able to push down, as well as instant troubleshooting to be able to see who's plugged into what port on the switch. The switches are robust. There is an 850-watt power budget brought to you by up to three power supply units. Again, when you are configuring things through the cloud, this brings you the ability to unify your VLAN configuration across the network. We do have multiple sizes available, including our brand new 16 port switch. It's a fanless design, making it suitable for industrial environments. We do have LAN bypass capabilities, keeping you up and running even if the switch loses power in a wide variety of temperature ranges. Means again, these things are tough, rugged, and can take a beating. So PepZim itself uh, has a few products underneath it. First up, our uh, smart reader, as well as the time and attendance app that's paired with it. When you start to use these products with other PepLink devices as a complete ecosystem, this brings to the table the concept of a smart office. The smart terminal, the smart reader, is compatible with most of your NFC cards out on the market today. 
you can deploy them anywhere as well as still being able to manage things centrally with our cloud-based backends. And with uh, API functionality, you can actually integrate that reader data seamlessly if you already have a TA app up and running. The Smart Reader is a compact plastic IP55 enclosure powered by PoE or terminal block, and you can connect it onto the network, whether straight through uh, Ethernet or for Wi-Fi if you have that out as well. Again, this works with most of the NFC-supported cards out on the market, and this gives you the ability to set up user groups and you're gating access to uh, applicable areas. Bob from accounting, for example, doesn't need to have access to the colo room. This pairs up with the time and attendance app, which you can take a look at just at ta.peplink.com. Uh, we do have the application either from the web or we do have a smartphone app available. This works again in tandem with the smart terminal, giving HR, <clears throat> excuse me, the ability to monitor attendance, uh, overview vacation requests and sick leave for their employees. Now, the employees actually have the ability to submit their own leave requests through the app, and all it takes is one click from management to go ahead and approve or deny that request. So again, when you start to mix everything together, this is what brings a smart office online. In this instance, John clocks in from the smart reader, which does get recorded by InControl2, and then starts to power up his devices in his office. Wi-Fi credentials are getting improved, etc. It is a, an attractive offering. Our SDPMU, which is uh, the Software Defined Power Distribution Unit. Basically, this is an IP plug uh, built with Peplink's care to detail in mind. Uh, when you pair this with our IoT Cloud app, you can keep an eye on voltage uh, usage as well. And then we do have a USB port uh, that you can use for out-of-band management. This gives you the ability to reboot power ports remotely from the IoT cloud, which can save you money in truck rolls, as well as the text time, which could, let's be honest, be probably better spent elsewhere. We have dual A and B AC power inputs. Uh, we do have uh, input and output voltage monitoring, out-of-band management via the USB port, and then the IoT cloud will work with that remote outlet on-off uh, capabilities. And we have a, one of those really nice OLED displays built in. PepSign is our digital signage solution. Uh, it's designed to build and manage that advertising or whatever you're building, you know, the animations, and display it on screens anytime and anywhere. These animations are very easy to be uh, built from the PepSign cloud and then pushed down to the player on site. The workflow is this. You access the PepSign application from, you know, from your terminal, design the content, and then save it to the PepSign cloud. You can then schedule and push that content to the on-site PepSign player, uh, the players have 32 gig of storage, which will play the content locally, saving you bandwidth from continually going back and forth to the cloud. And then you can play these animations on any connected television, monitor, or LED wall. PepSign is able to be integrated with other PepLink products. For example, you can set it up uh, with the smart terminal to trigger an event uh, with a badge swipe. PepSign does also integrate with our ad delivery service. Allow, uh, when you're going through InControl2, you can share the assets between the PepSign server and the ad delivery service. Most common application would be is to design your scene or animation in PepSign, render it down as a movie for use with the ad delivery service. To kind of go into the ad delivery service a bit, we have to first talk about Wi-Fi Captive Portal. PepLink's uh, Captive Portal capabilities allow you to set up a garden or landing page when a guest logs onto your network. We have multiple authentication methods available. Multiples of them can be active, and everything is completely customizable, graphic, text, 
terms and conditions, etc. Once you have your captive portal up and running, you can then start to monetize your free Wi-Fi with the ad delivery service. We have a few different ways that you can view that content, uh, where they have to watch uh, a 10-second video before, or before moving on, uh, answer survey questions in multiple formats as well. What this allows you to do is to gather insights on those on the network, as well as start to set up location-based ads when using our, our Max mobile devices. Uh, all this together allows you to set up these campaigns, setting start and end dates, as well as target impressions or clicks. And all of this is done from a single browser window. We do have our uh, ad delivery service cloud application that allows you to go ahead and get things up and running in all of these formats quickly and easily. Finally, let's talk a little bit about our VoIP solutions. Now with VoIP calls, your service quality is ultimately going to depend on the end user's customer connections. Latency has uh, delays, making a VoIP calls sometimes difficult to do. But the end user customer perception, of course, is that the VoIP itself is unreliable, giving you pushback, and ultimately they may try to pull equipment. Now, to try to mitigate some of those issues, an MPLS, of course, is an expensive way to get that consistent connectivity. Or you can use Speed Fusion to try to help affect your bottom line. Again, combining those commodity links into the super reliable connection. Now, with most, device, uh, most of our devices, we do have the USB port that you can take a, a USB dongle in for increased reliability for failover purposes, etc. Again, if one fails, other links are going to keep you up and running, keep the call up and running, uh, where it's a seamless end user experience. Uh, experience. Speed Fusion, again, cost effective, on average, 85, 90% cheaper than a lot of the MPLS solutions out on the market. QoS capabilities allows you to further help shape traffic, uh, keeping the VoIP calls consistent and clear. You can assign different priority levels to different types of traffic to minimize the latency uh, by giving a higher priority to VoIP, for example, as opposed to uh, normal web searches. All of this is meant to bring a better end user experience uh, when using VoIP through our system. Here's basically how it works. We got a remote site with a balanced 210 and a couple of VoIP phones, and then the headquarters is gonna have a Fusion Hub instance where the PBX is at. We go ahead and set up Speed Fusion between this Balance 210 back to the Fusion Hub, putting WAN smoothing on the tunnel allows us to fill the gaps in connectivity, giving you again that consistency, that reliability that is required from these normally unreliable links when used by themselves. And thanks to Speed Fusion, you're not dropping a call if a customer connection fails. When you're trying to design a VoIP solution, again, the, the size of the deployment is going to govern everything. But generally speaking, on customer sites, if we're just kind of looking for a load balancing, not necessarily speed fusion based solution, the Balance 30 Pro, that new device we touched on, is a great choice with its mixture of connections to, keep, uh, to try and give you that uptime. And if we're looking to bond things, primarily Ethernet, a Balance 210 is a great approach, or if it's a mix of more cellular connections, a Max HD2 is not a bad idea. And then for the headquarters, again, using some of the bigger boxes or the bigger Fusion Hub instances to be able to take all of that bandwidth, all of that throughput uh, necessary. Uh, the Plus organization uh, is using this solution to great effect. 37 sites, a mixture of Balance 310s out in the world, going back to a Balance 1350. They needed that reliability to support, in addition to the VoIP, other types of meeting connections, Citrix, etc. And to be able to do so as cheap as possible. So with that... Uh, 
and that's exactly how we answered the, um, answered the problem. Being able to migrate to the Speed Fusion solution brought all of those benefits that we've talked about today to the site, saving them money, giving them consistency, and making a happier end user experience. Well, that brings me to the end of my talk today, guys. Uh, just one last thing, if you'll notice uh, in your uh, partner pavilion cards, we do have Peplink souvenirs for uh, to meet a variety of marketing needs. Go, certainly go and reach out uh, if there are ones that are interest you. And just in the Peplink store, go to accessories and marketing materials. Uh, keep eyes on us on social media as well as form.peplink.com. And Julie, I am happy to talk and answer questions. Whatever you got, hit me with it. Thank you very much, Jason, what, for your wonderful presentation. We enjoyed it. And, yes, I do have questions. Let's go ahead and get started here. First one. Let's do it. Regar yeah, here we go. Uh, regarding WAN smoothing, does this involve yep. capping the Internet connection to make it more stable? No, apples and oranges. WAN smoothing is an option that you are setting up on the Speed Fusion configuration itself. Uh, what you're doing is you're sending redundant data down the line. So, you know, like think of your normal session, you'll one packet, et cetera. If you enable WAN smoothing, you can send that packet once, twice, three times. And then whoever, uh, it's kind of a foot race then. Whichever packet reaches the other end first is what's getting used. And then it just drops the redundant data accordingly. Uh, what the what the uh, the person might be talking about is uh, you can define, of course, the WAN connections uh, to more accurately reflect what you're getting from the ISP, uh, or even uh, some QoS opportunities as you dial up or down the connections. But WAN smoothing uh, is on Speed Fusion itself to try to mitigate a lot of that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Next question. Um, anything in the gig or 10 gig realm? Um, if we're talking about product side, definitely. Um, you know, you're looking at our, um, you know, the definitely the what we call the blue chip series. Uh, and if you're looking for like a gig of throughput and up, you'd be starting at about like that balance 305, 380, all the way up to the 2500. Uh, uh, Fusion Hub instances, much the same. The Max devices, uh, like the new MBX, for example, I believe is a, a giga throughput. Thank you very much. Next question. Regarding PDX, is there an IP rating for this? Like shockproof or is it a um, very sensitive device? Uh, it is not a sensitive device. Uh, as far as the IP rating on it, uh, that's actually something I would have to go and get back to you on. I believe, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, it might be 67 or IP67 or IP55, uh, but it is something I would have to go back to take a look at. Uh, if you want to go ahead and I would post that definitely in the form, form.peplink.com, uh, to try to get a quick answer or, or go ahead and, uh, Julie, if you can get his info and email it to me, I can follow up with you that way as well. Excellent. Can do that. Thank you. Next question. Um, regarding PDX again, are there multiple models available? Um, nothing with a briefcase handle look? Uh, no, the PDX, as I said, is a Pelican case enclosure. It does have the handle on it. So, I mean, it is, uh, it, it, it's a bigger briefcase. Um, <laughs> I, you know, is there like a slimmer line model in that enclosure? There is not. Uh, now, that being said, of course, you know, Peplink is famous for developing products on the fly sometimes. Uh, if there is a specific application, you know, depending on the size of the opportunity, conversations can be had, but out of the box, no. Okay, thank you. Next question here. Um, can we run a mobile podcast with the PDX? Um, connections would include at minimum two or three cameras, two or three speakers, uh, lighting, and that sort of thing? 
Uh, well, I mean, the PDX absolutely is developed for those kind of on-site temporary location setups. So, uh, again, dep you know, absolutely. Uh, it, it's very much a possibility. Again, you know, especially when you take in those three other uh, bays on the side for the Speed Fusion engine uh, add-ons, you've got a lot of horsepower under the hood. You have that PoE output capability to power devices. Uh, again, very possible, sure. Okay, excellent. Next question here. Um, MBX is new. Does it come with an AC adapter? Yeah, uh, power is absolutely in the box. Thank you. Next question here, MBX. Ignition sensing is built into the device, or how does it or how does it ready the ignition? Uh, yeah, it's a feature in the device. Uh, in essence, you are wiring it in via the terminal block into the electrical system. Uh, and that's how, I mean, that's where the sensing comes into play is on the pinout. Thank you. Next question. Um, regarding in control two, is there an annual cost? Uh, just warranty of the device. As long as the device is under warranty and there are, you know, those smart care packages available, I see two uh, uh, access is part and parcel. Thank you. Next question here. Um, IoT enabler. Um, is it enabled on all devices or does it need a new license? No, what I, when I what I meant when talking about the uh, how our SD switch is kind of an IoT enabler, uh, meaning again, you know, with that uh, remote monitoring that you can do from the IoT cloud, the ability to power devices on, you know, via the PoE port on and off, it kind of sets the stage for a lot of those applications, especially when you start to pair it. Uh, with some of our other PEPZIM products, the PEP sign, uh, the smart the smart terminal, et cetera. Thank you for that. Next question here. We've got a few more. I hope you don't mind. Sure. No problem. <laughs> How many? Okay, fantastic. How many admins can access the information off of the switch? Is it a single login or can each location access this, this data? Uh, you're talking from the IoT cloud, uh, it's customizable. I mean, as far as who you want to gate access to, uh, think a lot like in Control 2, you have your or you have your org admin, your group admin, etc. You can gate access as needed. Thank you for that. A few more questions here. What environment would you see a fanless device in? Uh, well, some of those remote devices uh, that you're not necessarily shielding the device for. Um, or, or the industrial applications comes to mind first off. Uh, you know, again, where cooling fans, if it's exposed to the, the rest of the environment, gives it, you know, uh, the ability to gum up the works, as it were. Thank you, Jason. Couple more questions. Next one here. Um, is there a billing platform uh, if I am controlling multiple sites and accounts or a third part that works well to connect via our existing connection? Uh, it would be third party. Uh, it, maybe if he expands a little bit on what he means by billing platform, just to make sure that I'm answering properly. But uh, ultimately, Natively, we don't do billing uh, through uh, like the badge reader or the captive portal, et cetera. You would have to be pairing that with another system. And, you know, uh, I would defer to Julie and the team at Microcom or like if, they, if they've if they run into this situation, you know, like your, your point of sale, your reseller doing this as a value add sort of thing would have better recommendations than I do. Okay, thank you very much for that. Next question here, is the Pepsim Reader a blue chip or Velocity product? Uh, it's kind of its own product, actually. You know, the uh, the Pepsim products 
are, are their own class of devices with their own pricing structure. Uh, again, reach out to your account reps. They'll tell you pricing. Okay, excellent. Um, regarding Pepsin, um, does it need the employee uh, to register when the login um, or is it automatic? Like, uh, does the phone connect to the network and then it tracks the time spent within the range of connection, meaning when they leave for a break or lunch automatically registers all of that? No, it's a badge in, badge out. So I mean they're manually swiping um on the turn on the badge reader, on the smart reader. Got it, got it. Okay. Um can you give us a quick overview on hours of support or the best way to reach PepLink for support? Um sure. Our support structure has always been to defer to the point of sale first. So you would reach out to Microcom in this instance. Uh, and they, you know, they would be that, they're that frontline level of support, answering basic questions, uh, getting things ready if escalation is required. Uh, we, we do have, again, support teams globally. Uh, well, the U.S. team is here in the Midwest. We have a team in the U.K. We have a team in Malaysia. We have a team in Hong Kong. Uh, there is some other, uh, other, levels of support certainly starting to brew a little bit that I can't talk about just yet. Uh, if you're talking about the U.S. team, we are here in the office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and then, it did, and then of course, it rolls over to the other teams. We're pretty close to 24-7, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, the best way to get a hold of us is, uh, again, touch base with Microcom first. They, uh, if they can't answer, they would create a ticket on your behalf, uh, getting it up to our uh, reseller uh, partner ticket queue. We do also have a fairly active form community. Uh, if you're looking for some more immediate touch when we get uh, after business hours, uh, again, as I said, there is a whole mixture of people in there from engineers on down to other end users. Uh, that's a very real possibility. And then we do also have a, a active social media team as well. Uh, we've certainly have tried to answer and give the, or at least give direction uh, through all our various social media channels that people have reached out that way too. Uh, but the best way, again, is touch base with your point of sale. That way things get routed properly. Excellent. Thank you. Just two more questions here. In regards okay. to Carousel, <laughs> in regards to Carousel, yep. is it self-generated content or can you uh, sell it and add space to other companies? Well, that's exact. I mean, the, the ad delivery service is kind of meant to start to monetize that information. All three of the campaigns available, the Carousel, uh, the short video, or the surveys uh, are created on the ad delivery service cloud. So you're putting it together. Now what you're putting in there, that's up to you. Uh, so certainly being able to, you know, like if you wanted to sell that ad space to a restaurant next to the next to work or something, I mean, that's on you. You certainly can, we give you the tools. Excellent, last question here. Does Peplink have VoIP handsets? No, uh, again, our VoIP, our VoIP answers are more network side and as far and not end uh, end user device. Uh, by that I mean a handset, a soft phone, etc. It uh, you can use pretty much any VoIP offering on you know VoIP phone on the market. We use uh, Yealink and Polycom, for example, here in the office. Uh, but where we, where we enter the market is to give you that consistent back end to route the call through with speed fusion, the, you know, the aggregation of WAN connections, quality of service, et cetera. We make sure you got a solid foundation on your network and then route away and you should have a great call. Jason, thank you so much for answering all those questions and thanks to everyone sure. for attending today. <laughs> if uh, anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact their sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown here today, 
please visit us at www.microcom.us. And please remember, this webinar presentation has been recorded and it will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so you can view it again. Jason, appreciate your time and appreciate the presentation today. Fantastic information. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day.